And welcome back to the Spinner Rack, presented by Comics Remix, Breaking the Fourth Wall, episode 53. One week, we're going to have the sound effects. I don't know when, but we'll have sound effects. What, what's it, what do you want? Like a... You yeah, know, like a, like like a, a wall breaking, preferably? Like Hulk smash? Well, we have that in the intro before the show. So why do we need yeah, to have it in it? the show, too? Yeah. Do you even watch your own videos? No. Seriously. Do you? <laughs> Sometimes. As always, I'm your host, Big B. Brian Adams, joining me my co-host. Like, why would I to it if, you know, I'm sitting here recording. Hey, man, you're the one that had it made. That's very true. This is, this is <laughs> your brand. I just work here. No, I, I listen to them in the, in the van when I'm at work. A lot of times I can just, if I have a van that has a working radio, I should point out. Would you like to introduce our guest today? No, you can do this. You should do in the intro. I'll show you are quiet until somebody mentioned yeah. it here. Yeah. Like, no, you just <laughs> This is our, this is our boy. The, the book. The, the book. That's how he shall <laughs> be known out. as The book. Chris, good to have you on the show. Good to be here. I had to come redeem myself after getting cut on a hick last week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I made him specify he was just <laughs> talking to you and not in general. <laughs> yeah. That didn't help the matter, though. No. I was like, well, you know, maybe. Because then we'd have had a room full of hicks. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that's not good. We could have just invited some of my family up here <laughs> to see. I got some hillbilly blood. So, we're going to jump right into it. I'm already Let's, outnumbered. Yeah, you are. You are. All right, let's go. Captain America White finally coming out after seven years. Does anyone care anymore? Honestly, no. I don't, personally. Now, if I sit back and think about Hulk Gray, Spider-Man Blue. Phenomenal stories. Daredevil Yellow. Very awesome. Um, but I really don't care about Captain America right now. I think it's because Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale have both been out of comics for a while. Well, Tim Sale's been doing some variant covers here and there. But, I mean, they haven't done anything of substance mm-hmm. late, you know, and it's like, whatever. Well, and then They were on a roll with that stuff back then. Uh, they were, and if it would have continued back then, it like probably would have been one of those books you were like, man, this was great. It's but now like no saying one gives Daredevil, uh, or what is it, Daredevil Target or Daredevil Bullseye, whatever that miniseries was that Kevin Smith was writing. It's been so long, I don't even remember, where he did the one issue. And the rest never came out. I think it was Target. Was it Target? Is that kind of like evil Spider-Man, evil that men do? Yeah, where you got but that two, finished. You got one issue, and then four years later, you no, got no, the No, 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 it was two. the first three, but they shipped a couple weeks and about a month late. Oh, is that there. what it was? It was the first three. And then you get one or two years to go by, and then you get four, five, and six. And the, the story between issue three and then issue four, just the quality fell off. And for some reason, Nightcrawler was added. It's like, whatever. I do have a copy of number one signed, though, by Smith, Rachel, and Terry Dotson. So all three of them guys signed that for me. Thank you very much. That's when I was a fan. But, yeah, so, I mean, at this point, it's kind of just like a wash for Marvel, really, because, I mean, is Steve Rogers, is Captain America even relevant at this point anymore, considering he's not Captain America? Here's my question. What would be the point of telling this story now? I don't know the answer to that, so... Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Uh, the Star Wars line for Marvel's expanding. Yeah, they're uh, adding the, uh, the Lando book. Lando. It's finally the, the pimp of the intergalactic empire is getting his own book. Uh, it should be good. It better be better than uh, Princess Leia's, which has been a wash for me. Has it really? Yeah. It's been a total wash. Um, Star Wars, the main book, has been good. The Darth Vader book has been awesome. Mm-hmm. And actually, last week, uh, I believe Vader 5 or 6 came out plus Star Wars, and they dovetailed into each other. Okay. And it was awesome to actually see. I like when comic books are telling a story together and they actually are mindful enough to mention things. You know, yeah. you get to see scenes play out. Kind of like, like how the crossovers were back in the 90s. When well, they as were convoluted actually, as they were, they, at least they still, like, you can pick one up and know. it was Like, Onslaught is a great example. Like, well, it was like, uh, maybe it was Court of Isles, or it was one of these Batman storylines recently in New 52. Okay. And Nightwing and Batman both like, I think, I think Nightwing slaps Batman. Okay. But the story takes place in both the Nightwing comic book and Batman simultaneously. Okay. But you just see kind of different sides of the I do remember that. Story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Uh, fans are in uh, up in arms about Han Solo having a wife. Does it really Why? matter? No, it doesn't. He's a scoundrel. But at the same time, it's a comic book. They could, in the next issue, they can just write it back out, you know? Yeah. Oh, well, she's not really my wife. This is what happened, or whatever the case. Is that just an android I picked up along the way? <laughs> <laughs> Those damn hitchhikers. Right. 
So Orlando, Charles Soule, Alex Maleev. That'll be good. Yeah. Good, good team on that book. Um, I enjoyed Charles' art, or not his art, excuse me, his writing on Swamp Thing. I thought that was really, really good. You know, I, uh, when they, sh- when it switched over, because he took over after Snyder, right? Yeah. There was, like, a brief moment there it was where like, it was, uh, uh, yeah, and it's like he had to find his footing, mm-hmm. but then from there it was pretty good. I remember I put him on blast on Facebook about Swamp Thing sucking after Snyder left. Yeah. And someone that's friends with him got all, like, offended for him. I remember you told me And that. he was like, come on, dude, that guy's my friend, man, give him a chance. And I was like, F- you, mother <laughs> and then it picked up. I mean, I intend on buying that in trade because it was a good Swamp Thing run. Right. Uh, let's see what else I got here from Marvel. Alex Maleev, he's a good artist. Like I was, I liked his Daredevil stuff when he was doing it with Bendis, and then when he went over mm-hmm. to Moon Knight, it just fit that character as well. Spider Man, casting rumors going crazy. Austin Butterfield is now out, which really sucks. I don't know if you've seen Ender's Game. No. Actually, pretty good movie. It's the only movie I can tell you the kid was in. He's young. He's got that. He's probably like, what, 16, 17? Something like that. So he's perfect to play a younger Spider-Man, which is what they're going for now. Instead of, like, having a 30-year-old dude playing a 15-year-old kid, they're actually going to get someone close to the age. Um, Chandler Riggs of Walking Dead fame apparently wanted it, but I guess I, I the really Walking Dead him. schedule. I couldn't see him as Spider-Man, though. No? He's a good actor, but I don't think I, I, don't think I would have bought into him as Spider-Man. Yeah, you'd be like, oh, look, it's Carl. Yeah. Where's the zombies at? I want to see Spider-Man go after those. I, you know what? When casting somebody as big as the character of Spider-Man, I'd almost like to see somebody who's had very minimal exposure or just a newbie. You know, because before Mark uh, Mark Cavall, or whatever his name is, Cavill? What, I, what Cavill. Is Henry Cavill? Henry. I don't know why I said Mark. Yeah, I don't know why. I, 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 whatever. Um, before he was cast as Superman, I had never heard of the guy. You know, but obviously he's been in a few things. So it's just, I feel with a character like Spider-Man, it needs to be something like along those lines. I think he was on The Tudors. The what? The Tudors. It was a Showtime show about Tudors. Henry the Eighth or some Oh. It was British aristocracy crap. Whatever. It's not important. <laughs> apparently not. It's not important. But anyway, it's, apparently they're down to two people, um, Tom Holland and Charlie Rowe. Don't some kid from the Golden are. Compass and some kid from Wolf Hall. I don't know who either of them are there, so it's probably a good thing. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. No Doctor Strange. No. Yeah. What happened? I don't know. As of Saturday morning, uh, it's confirmed that uh, he's gone. Why? He's been removed from the list. Oh, uh, well, I thought, wasn't he, like, officially signed on? I thought so, too. But according to Bleeding Cool... He is gone. Which, that kind of sucks. I was kind of looking forward to yeah. some Cumber Snatch <laughs> playing Doctor Strange. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what everyone's obsession is with saying that guy's name wrong. Like, it's like the hip thing to do. Like, recently I've noticed that uh, Bye Felicia has become a really popular thing. Yeah, I've noticed it's like, that what as the, well. Like, seriously, when did Friday come out? 95? Right? So it took 20 years for that to catch on? Yeah. What? What's her name said it on NXT the other day? Uh, your your tag team, the chick Carmella? Yeah. She was like, bye, Felicia. And I was like, okay. That's when I was like, okay, that's, bye, Felicia has now jumped the shark, in my opinion. Yeah. But it's funny, though, because uh, my girl and I, we've been saying that for years, actually. I, you know. Like, see? I, I figure out trends before right. they happen. Yeah, apparently there's more than one trendsetter around. <laughs> Oh, uh, that was awesome, man. Uh, so now we're going to skew back over to the DC side well, of things. Hold on before we go, since Ooh. we're talking about Marvel and we're talking about comics. Yeah. I picked up a Marvel comic, like a physical Marvel comic, first time in months. Renew Your Vows? Yes. Talked to you about this yesterday. Spider-Man Renew Your Vows, number one. There's just, just something about it that caught my attention. I was like, you know what? I want to check this out. I actually went and paid for a copy, and... You know what? And I'm not saying that because I don't download or anything like that. It's just I just stopped buying comics other than Turtles. So, right. But I went, I bought the comic, I read it yesterday, and for, I don't, like I was telling you, I don't know what it was about it. It just seemed like a 90s-esque comic story. You know, like the vibe with it, the, the, the pace of the story, like most classic of the Spider-Man versus <laughs> Venom, you know. Like, it was pretty cool. But like I was mentioning... I, I, I'm not sure 
because you said Battle World is like just basically a patchwork of all this other stuff. So because you get Peter and MJ still married, mm-hmm. but the baby alive and kicking. Mm-hmm. So that's you know one aspect. But then Eddie Brock is still Venom, mm-hmm. but he looks like the Matt Gargan mm-hmm. version. I was like, whatever. Think like Convergence, but not as shitty. That's really the that's best. That's not way. a great. <laughs> that's the that's the best way I could because I I made the comparison in previous shows that you could totally compare Secret Wars and Convergence yeah, on true. a bazillion left different levels because Convergence pretty much like picked different pieces throughout the history of DC and was like okay this is Gotham City circa pre crisis this is Gotham City zero hour which they seem to horishly stick to Gotham City or Metropolis yeah for the most part which is kind of sad. But Secret Wars is kind of like, okay, here's some old man Logan, Inferno, Planet Hulk. Yeah. But it's all completely, like, um, I noticed, rewritten. Well, not something that I noticed, but this is how long it's been since I've actually read the Spider-Man books. I mean, I was reading it um, when, da- when Dan Slott relaunched it after Superior. I think I read up to, like, issue five or six or whatever. Um, maybe a little longer than that. Gave up that quick? Well, I stopped working at the store. Oh, that's right. Um, right? What was the uh, Spider-Verse? I stopped reading when Spider-Verse started. And that was, like, not because I didn't want to read it, because I, actually, I still want to finish it. Um, but every time they kept calling Venom Eddie Brock, they mm-hmm. would just keep calling him Brock. So my instinct is telling me Brock Lesnar is now Venom. <laughs> like, it's just, I kept reading it that way, because they're like, oh, it's we got to get away from Brock, we got to get away from Brock. And in my head, I'm just like, Brock Lesnar. That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? That would be an awesome crossover. Yeah. I don't even pick up a Marvel book to see that. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of crossovers, I showed you that cover of uh, Flash, the seventy fifth anniversary. I think it's in September. Mm-hmm. What what or, book is that on exactly? It, what book? Ex- oh, come on, no, you know? you're gonna ask for specifics. I just want to know because I'm like, hey, that one cover. It's that one cover of Green Lantern. So it's a Green Lantern comic. I believe so. Okay, see, so we're around the Flash, right. Green Lantern. Of course, they're not going to have... Uh, oh, it's a variant for Flash 44. Okay. You know, I think it's going to sell out. The only way I don't... Okay, I'm sorry. It's Green Lantern's 75th anniversary. Okay. So, it's uh, Flash 44, really small in the corner, Galactus and Silver Surfer. Um, that's pretty funny. I could see Marvel being like, no, you're not releasing that cease and desist. And that cover, finding the way of uh, the Batgirl, what was it, 40, 44 variant? Remember the Joker? Yeah, yeah. I can see that going along that. That's some BS. Unless Marvel's a good sport about it. And they're like, hey, free promotion for our characters. But then again, those are Fox characters. True that, too. So. And maybe that's why they did it. Maybe. Maybe it's like, oh, well, if you're not going to use them. Yeah. Aha. Uh-huh. Or some people think that it's a, that's a nod to a possible forthcoming crossover between the two companies. Who knows? Which, you know. It needs to happen. It's there entirely speculation. You know, my problem with those crossovers is they never go how they want them to go. Yeah. Like, everyone's got to fight, and then they've got to, like, everyone's got to get their good shots in, and then they come to, like, a mutual respect. And, and just, then like, they realize they have the same bad guy, and right? they team up. And... Just, eh, I'd rather just not. I wish that they would just do a crossover of Deadpool and Deathstroke, man. I, just, every time I see somebody post something about Deadpool, it's always, oh, Deadpool can beat anybody. He's took down the whole Marvel Universe, blah, blah, blah. I wish they would just make a comic just to shut people up. Even if it Destro falls, I don't give a sh- just so people shut up about it. I f-ing hate Deadpool. <laughs> I, I detest Deadpool. Oh, you want to see my Deadpool tattoo? <laughs> yeah, it's like one of the worst characters, in my opinion. Totally overrated. It's like one of those characters that like the fanboys just latched onto. It's just like, let's like do everything we could possibly do with Deadpool. Gangnam style Deadpool covers. That was the problem. Seriously? Deadpool always had like one of those followings where he was like he was one of those cool characters, but like one of the unsung characters. Mm-hmm. And then once somebody was just like, you know what, hey, this is pretty cool. Then it just started building and building. And like you said, fanboys just ran with it, and you know now it's like, hey, it's just like overexposed, man. Yeah, very, very heavily, very heavily. And he's not even that great. He sucks. Deadpool. I would love to see Deathstroke versus that because Deathstroke would kick Deadpool's. Depending on who's writing it, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> which, which company's publishing it. Because yeah. remember the Marvel vs. DC crossover? Two were, um, the same with JLA Avengers. Two were published by Marvel and two were published by DC. Mm-hmm. It's a bunch of crap. Anyway, moving on. 
Constantine is lobbying for an enemy for special effects. An enemy? An enemy. Did I say enemy? Yeah. An Emmy. There we go, enemies. They for fan, for yeah. Fantasy, yeah. yeah, they got plenty of enemies. Uh, fantasy and art direction. They're going for an Emmy. They're trying to. I don't really see what the point is. I mean, an Emmy win would be great. Right. Even a really nomination would be good for the show. The show that no longer exists. I honestly don't understand how that show didn't get picked up for a second season. I don't. Not even on another station at that. I know. It's it's it's. Especially with all the lobbying people did, you know, yeah, just to get it moved. It's unbelievable time. to me. I'm surprised CW didn't pick it up. Because even Stephen Amell was lobbying to get it on CW. Yeah. Yeah, he's wanting to do a crossover with that show, wouldn't he? Of course, then, you know, yeah. Of course, then it would have been competition for Supernatural. Yeah. Which I don't know who watches that freaking show. Same people that watch Teen Wolf, I'm guessing. Uh, that's that's another horrible. Dave thing. Lewis, we're talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't want to uh, offend our boy, but that show sucks. Teen Wolf, like seriously, I who wants watch, to watch that crap? Only Teen Wolf I watched was the Michael J. Fox one. Right? Oh, you didn't see the one with Jason Bateman? That's the second one. Yeah, I think I have that. I have like that two in one DVD combo. But uh, it's you know. Oh, that would have been at Walmart. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like there are so many comic book shows out now, and so many of them weren't as good as Constantine. Gotham immediately springs to mind. I like Gotham. I liked it. Wasn't nearly as good as Constantine. Yeah, I can't say I have not once watched an episode of Constantine. So See, you're can. the f***ing problem, man. I don't have time. You're why I got canceled. You right? people like you. you. Son of a bitch. I, I don't have time, man. I don't have time to watch the I want to watch. But you watched Gotham. <laughs> not all of them, and I watched those on demand. And you could watch it right now streaming. He's only, oh, like, yeah. halfway through season two of Arrow. Yeah, I, yeah, I finished season two. I'm waiting for right. season three to oh. jump on Netflix. Did you... Did you catch up on Flash at least? I watched the season. Finale. He's like, I watched the season finale. I'm waiting for the Blu-ray, mo. Jesus. The only reason Swanker. I'm caught up on Flash is because I knew y'all were gonna talk about it on here, so I had to like not listen to the episode of this show for like a couple of days just so I could catch up on Flash. So y'all didn't spoil it. It's more committed than I am, and I own the shit. Right? That's, that's, that's pretty bad, man. Yeah, it's, you know, I love that show. Like, iZombie, right? iZombie's picked up for a second season. I've never watched that. iZombie, not a bad show, but they seriously follow a cookie-cutter storyline for every episode. It's a rinse-and-repeat show with a few elements of, okay, we're going to, an overarching story. Since we're talking about DC shows, I spoke to Alex a couple days ago. He's watched Supergirl already. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you could die. Yeah. I don't want to do that. Um, he says it's, uh, it's pretty good. He's really surprised. It doesn't look bad. I mean, I think a lot of that fanboy hate comes from, like, those dudes that haven't seen or touched a vagina since they came from one. <laughs> and they're just offended that a woman is getting a lead on a show. And that Jimmy Olsen's black. You know what? It's got to start uh, somewhere, because why... Was, was, that, was that you that was like, why the f*** Jimmy Olsen black? Well, like, it doesn't bother me that they change characters to be, you know, a different race. Like, I know you hate that... Uh, Will Smith is dead shot. I hate that. I really do. <laughs> but that it's just I hate me. Will Smith. That's the problem. Yeah. But you can't you... get jiggy with me, B. Yeah. <laughs> but how are you going to change a guy that's supposed to be a nerdy, redheaded, you know, guy, and then now he looks like freaking Tyrese out there? Like I just don't want you. Yeah, against that. Tyrese. I don't. Well, he was in Fast and Furious. He was yeah. in Transformers. I mean, he's a terrible he actor. Sucks. But... He's a terrible actor. <laughs> In Transformers. Dude. Terrible actor. Yeah, he was in Transformers. That says he everything. originally was supposed to play a bus. We transformed. He was gonna start playing Sweet Lady. I think he was originally supposed no. to be a was over, that, your, over your head. Yeah, if that was a joke, I, I'm not getting okay, it. Never mind. Tyrese reminds me of like a. He should be a soap opera actor, not a, a movie actor. Like his, it's terrible. You never watched? You never heard Tyrese's music? No. no. See, it's not funny when I have to explain the joke now. <laughs> yeah. See, no. His very first single was called Sweet Lady, and he was on the back of a bus swing, singing to a chick about it. Okay. Singing her the song, Sweet Lady. Yeah. So high in Transformers, he transforms into a bus. And he plays okay. No, I get it. I get it. It's no. just, yeah. No. 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 That was, that was a poor attempt at humor, son. It was a poor attempt at humor. Whatever. Are you keeping, are you taking cabs on how many I times? I stopped at like 35. Saying? I stopped at like 35. <laughs> yeah. It's the beep. You're just dude. really going to have beep, to pay attention. The beep has now ruined everything because mm -hmm. I felt like, we went into the season, we're like, okay, we're going to try and tone the swearing down. And then it was kind of happening, but it was like slipping out maybe less than ten times an episode, I'd say. And then he was like, you know what, we just need to get a beep. And then now the beep has come, and it's just like... Well, we need a beep, because if we want, like, 
a sponsor or something at the end of the day, all kidding aside, you got to have something that everybody can listen to. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't just have a show full of profanity because then that eliminates half of the people. Like, I kind of, we had a a pretty good follower in Lou Bernal, but I don't even know if Lou listens anymore. And I remember back in the day, Lou would be like, man, I really like you guys' show, but you guys swear too much. Yeah. Which always struck struck me as funny because Lou goes to, like, porn conventions and shit. Yeah. (laughs) So it's funny that someone could be, like, that into porn, (laughs) that you go to a convention, (laughs) but someone dropping an F-bomb, like... It's, uh, it's just a weird dichotomy to me. Since I started keeping up with the show, and it's like, it's like Junior seems like Captain America here. Like, every time you say a customer, he's like, language? language. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. And then it was last week when I did that barrage of f***s in the beginning of it. Yeah. You just kind of gave up. I yeah, because I knew they were going to get beefed. You're like, all right, f- it. He's putting beefs in. Let it roll. Now it's going to sound like a Michael Bay film. Yeah, right. <laughs> the only problem is sometimes when he's editing, he misses some of the beeps. But they're just shits. Doesn't matter, man. I mean, don't they say shit on daytime TV? I don't know. I don't watch daytime TV. Otherwise, I probably would have watched Constantine at night. Well, <laughs> um, You know, it's funny. <laughs> he, he messaged me the other day, and he was like, you missed a beep. And I'm thinking, man, the only beeps I can remember missing are like hell. And if he's going to give me some shit about hell, I'm going to be like, go fuck yourself. But no, he was like, you missed a shit. And then as I kept listening, you missed like three or four of them. Yeah. Which I also tweeted while listening to an episode. I realized that I go, oh, and say a lot. Like, you would be amazed. How I, I could probably, with the amount of time we've been doing this show, I could probably, like, put together just, like, an hour long just me going, oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> So on this episode. On this episode, Brian, oh, uh, uh, more, <laughs> more, yeah. more changing in comics. Did you hear about... How Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy are supposedly a thing. You know, it was always hinted at, you know, like it was suggested, but it was never really confirmed or whatever. Well then. There you go. Confirmation. It was confirmed. This this, this panel right here, dude, this is great, right? What issue is this from? It's, uh, I don't know, but apparently it looks like the current... It's a Harley Quinn book. The current Harley Quinn book. But I like this because Harley's on top of Ivy and she says, is that your hand? Yeah. And then Harley says, is that yours? <laughs> Seriously? It's like, are you going to get off? And she's like, are you? Like, I'm not the one on top. Wow. So much for, uh, you know, kid-friendly books, huh? But See, whatever, now, here's man. my here's my thing. Are people going to be up in arms about this and be like, you know, that's not how it's supposed to be. You shouldn't make a character gay for the sake of making them gay. Which brings us into the Batgirl controversy. Okay, let, let me first oh, answer that forget question. Forget it then, man. Whatever. Before you bring it to the bed. No, that's fine. Maybe but I feel like because sure. because it's two girls, everyone's going to be cool with it. Yeah. The, the fanboys hiding in their mom's basement's got something, some spank material. But, yeah, so you were saying the collected... The new issue of Harley Quinn. The collected Please. edition pink, pink. of Batgirl is coming out where she fights the fake Batgirl that was revealed to be a trans... A, she's trans, right? It's a guy. Yeah. yeah. And apparently, Batgirl has a horrified look on her face at the reveal that it's a man she's been fighting and not a chick. Right. And they're going back and changing the artwork, I guess, to make it a less horrified look. Yeah. To, the, to fix it, I guess, to not make her transgender or whatnot now. Oh, so are they changing the character? I from, believe Man, so. that's going to cause even more backlash then from the, the SJWs, social justice warriors. Cool, know. yeah, because I'm like... SJWs. NWO. <laughs> right. I, th- those these people irritate me. It's it's this like small, overly vocal minority on the internet that they see shit and they're just like, ah, oh, this offends me, and they get all nuts about it. That's and why they we didn't create get that. a petition and it gets signed by yeah. a million people. We created a petition. And it's got eighty one two signatures. Yeah, whatever. At least we tried. <sighs> it's not over to the. But uh, you know, it's ridiculous because I don't feel like like I don't read Batgirl. That book has been nothing but. It's controversial controversial since it relaunched or revamped, I should say, with the new suit and everything. Like, it's been nothing but in the headlines for one reason or another. And, you know, I'm, I, I sent out the tweet last night. I don't understand. Like, whatever happened to artistic freedom? Like, you want to make the story for making the story? Do it. Mm-hmm. Now, whether it was something that came down and DC wasn't happy with it, so they told the creators, hey, you know, we're going to change it. So the creators are jumping on board with the companies. Well, this is what our company wants. 
we're going to play along. They're going to tow the company line. Yeah, thank you. You know, or it's something where it's just like, well, they felt, they felt uh, all the backlash. And they're like, well, DC, this is what happened. Can we change this? And then DC gives them the okay. Because, it's I mean, it's almost similar. I'm talking. You shut up, you hick. Um, <laughs> it's almost what, like. What the <laughs> Duh. Um, it's cool. I'm still learning. Um, the uh, the Batwoman controversy. I know a guy from each middle. You remember? The, bat, the Batwoman, that's it, Batgirl? Batwoman controversy, where mm-hmm. they were going to marry off, and they're like, no, you can't do that, blah, blah, blah. And it's another thing, going back to the Harley and Ivy, if there's something there, why didn't they let the Batwoman thing go on? But it's okay for two of their biggest, because uh, let's face it, Harley is probably next to Wonder Woman, their biggest female character. So you have two of the most well-known uh, female characters in DC Comics history, along to happen to be villains to one of the most popular characters in DC history. They're okay to go play a uh, rug musher with each other. No offense to any of the our uh, gay and lesbian friends out there, um, but they wouldn't let Batwoman get married. And now there's an issue with the transgender. First no of all, creative freedom anymore. Like, it's it's not, first of all, onto that transgender thing. When that happened, I was like, "This is the most ignorant shit I have ever read," because it's not like, okay, if you've been fighting someone for like a week, like put yourself in Batgirl's shoes, right? You're brawling with this bitch. You guys have been throwing down. This bitch is taking you to task. And then you find out she's a dude. I think you are You should be allowed to be a little bit surprised. Yeah. yeah. The first guy that hooks up with Caitlyn Jenner and doesn't know that he was a Bruce. When he finds Mr. Wa- Mr. <laughs> Happy, I think, I think he's warranted a bit of surprise, don't you? Yeah. Maybe a little bit of disgust if that's not his thing. So why the hell... The way he didn't chop chop. No, apparently he hasn't chop chop. He doesn't want to. Not that this is the view or the soup or any other yeah. shows. Not that Caitlyn Jenner has anything to do with comics. Yeah. But I was just making a point. No, he's going to be making a point with whoever he is. <laughs> right in the eye. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I don't, I really don't understand the whole, you know, it's, we could, we could do an entirely full episode and talk about diversity in comic books. And we'd get nowhere. And we would get nowhere because it's like a freaking headache. I will give Marvel credit, though, because lately they're sticking to their guns with the diversity. DC seems like they want to do it, and they try it, and then they backpedal. Well, I think, you it's know... It's like dipping your toe in the pool and be like, oh, it's cold, I don't want to do it. Like, I'm one of these people that's a firm believer in that if you truly really want diversity in comic books, start creating new diverse heroes. Don't just shoehorn a black guy into Captain America. Don't make Thor female. Don't do, you know, everything that they're doing. Not that I don't like any of that stuff. Like, I love Thor. I've said on this show many times, the current run of Thor has been great. Yeah. I'm a big supporter of Lady Thor. But, at the same time, create new stuff. But at the same time I say that, you look back historically and that just fails. Yeah. You look at Milestone. You have a whole line of black characters created by black creators that just failed. So expecting all these old comic book fanboys that have their thumbs in their ass and they just can't stand the fact that Captain America is a black guy, that ladies, that Thor is a woman, that they're changing, you know, Green Lantern's gay, that they're getting pissed off that all their characters are being changed because that's my character. Well, it's not yours. Can anybody really be surprised though that Green Lantern's gay? I mean, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that you're here, go ahead and say your comment that you were going to say earlier. You've been on the show. You've been kind of quiet. I don't even remember what my comment was. I was interrupted and called a hick. And I forgot yeah, seriously, I, you uh, just cut him off like an asshole. Oh, no. What I was going to say was, uh, <laughs> yeah, I remember now. Yeah. Uh, no, it's just all the good stories we could be having right now instead of these <laughs> stories that they're pushing out could be just getting killed because, you know, diversity, everything. So we got to change this, we got to change this, we got to change this. Kills whatever cool story we could have had. They're just, they're scared to, um, to explore new venues and new opportunities. I mean, because... I mean, these characters have been around for what? Superman's been around 70 years? 70, no, more than 80. 75, 80 it's years? About 80. Okay, so it's like these characters have been around the long... God, I can't even... Near a century. I spell of... check. These characters have been around for so long already, and they've been through so much, but at what point does it become where it's like, you know, we really need to start thinking fresh ideas or this character is not going to be very relevant anymore? I mean, because it happens. Mm-hmm. You know, these characters will always be a part of history. Even 100 years from now, people are going to be like, yeah, Superman. You know, just how, like, we look it's, back and we're like, oh, yeah, you know, Robin Hood and 
King Arthur and all these guys. It's, you know? it's like I said on a, 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 a Facebook post, there was this huge long thing about diversity, and that's why I actually brought up the point of the Milestone characters, because I was reminded by someone else. Well, aren't that, they relaunching as a, as a separate company now? Milestone? Yeah, Are I, they? I thought I read that. I don't know, but I know that when uh, Static Shock went down... The, about, yeah, they're talking about Static Shock movies. There was an editorial mandate that, like that Static Shock knock, knock. made more urban. Knock, knock. F*** you. Knock, knock. F*** you. Knock, yeah, you knock. can interrupt people in here as long as you're not a hick. <laughs> 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 but, I mean, you, can you really, like... Is every black person like need to be urbanized? No, I agree. That was a that was a big turnoff when I was reading stuff. It's just, I, I saw that a lot with the black community. It's like the characters were just always too like, come on, man, too like why? Yeah, like a black person or a Latino person can't be you know like written the same way you would write a Caucasian person. Like, where's the? Everybody's gotta be chef, right? <laughs> Seriously, or Dolomite. <laughs> Where's the Bryant Gumble of the Marvel Universe? You <laughs> nice. know what I'm saying? Seriously. You know, it's... But what then, are you see, gonna do? we can get an argument going about, well, not all characters are in that way, because look at Sam Wilson. Yeah, no, or they're not all Luke that Cage. way. They're not all that way. Right, but it's it's the new ones that you're trying to push, and like, mm-hmm. I don't know, man. It's whatever. It is what it is. It's selling comics, so you can't, you know what I mean? Like, okay, this is, is what really I was going to say. Comics, though, That's what they say. I don't look at the numbers. I'm just a fan. I just read like you. We just do the show. That's about my commitment to it. I'm not. Oh, how many books did Black Panther sell? Because I don't f-ing care. Yes, but title. what I would like to see is instead of them trying to reinvent the wheel, how about we just break the wheel and make something new? I don't know. I like wheels, man. They're pretty smooth. You know. Can't see you driving on a square. That's what your that's what your pal Dennis Barger called it. He said, "Hop on over on the marble cart with the squared wheels. Oh, it's really? a bumpy ride, but it's interesting." Nice. And I was like, "Break the wheel, man! Do something different." Todd McFarlane did it. He gave us Spawn, which I really find funny because initially in Spawn's run, yeah, we knew Spawn was black, but his face is burnt, so you really can't tell that he's black. And then he uses his powers to get his face back, and what happens? He's a white blonde guy. Yeah. So I, I, was that like his thumb in his nose at the comic book industry at the time? Probably. Maybe. So moving on, final thing I want to talk about, Gods and Monsters. I know we hit it on a little bit last week. They put out the minis, Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman. Awesome. Pretty good stuff, yeah. I only saw the Batman one. I, I liked it. I really did. All I know is right away. I'm it, waiting for them to make a Harley Quinn action figure or statue based off that design. Yeah. You know they will. Dude, that was awesome. It was like Tim Burton style, like the way her face and neck and everything looked. It's pretty awesome. It's it's just good to see the original Batman, the animated series crew back together making animation. Mm-hmm. Uh, I knew, dude, when Batman opens the fridge in that first scene and it's full of decapitated heads, I was like, this is the sh. We're on the right path. This is the sh. Well, now, let me ask you something. Were you a bit surprised that they let Harley curse? No. Okay. No, because I know that they're. This coming out of the gate, they have said that this was going to be like a more. Like, adults. Well, the fact that she's literally running around in panties. Yeah, literally running around in in panties. For the chainsaw. I'll admit, though, that was, uh... It was was disturbing in, like, a holy kind of way, you know, like... Yeah, they they elevated the character of Harley Quinn to a new level in six minutes. Yeah. Which was pretty amazing. Um... So, yeah, like I said last week, Batman's no longer Bruce Wayne. He's Kirk Langstrom, who somehow became a vampire trying to cure his cancer. Which was kind of interesting to see him at the end feed off of Harley when he captures her. Yeah. Wonder Woman's a new god. Okay. She's got, uh, she's ditched the bracelets. She's got this bad sword that's like a mother box. She's got like this little crown, like, looks like Galactic or something. Yeah, totally. Uh, it it almost comes into like what Barda wore? Kind of. But, uh, dude, her was, was awesome. She fought this new, like, robotic version of Giganta and she's like porting around, dude. Because, you know, the mother box mm-hmm. is really, it was really good, man. And then she gets it on with Steve Trevor after, yeah, after they've killed, like, a hundred dudes and destroyed yeah. a robot. Yeah, it almost looks like he's getting raped. Isn't yeah, it? totally. It <laughs> totally. Like, no, no, right now. She, yeah, yeah, like, she, she forcibly takes him. <laughs> it was interesting. And then Superman. Superman one was awesome. That was my favorite one. Now, was from, Deathstroke in it? No, he wasn't. <laughs> that would have been my favorite, but no, he wasn't. <laughs> it was Awesome, yeah. Amanda Waller was in it. Yeah. That's Wall. close enough, I guess. Yeah, she was a president. Yeah. The president Waller. Hmm. Brainiac's little baby. Yeah. 
have to watch that one. It was really interesting. Apparently, I read the backstory on uh, Wikipedia for Superman. Superman is the son of Zod, who was rocketed to Earth after Krypton explodes, and uh, raised by a, a, a Latino family. <laughs> yeah, I like how they added that in there. So, yeah. So they've managed to, like... DC diversity. <laughs> Well, with that whole DCU, I would call it destroying continuity still. Yeah. For you. But Gods and Monsters Dude looks awesome. Diversity created. July 28th, I believe. Can't wait to see it. Wrap up here, DCU. Two weeks into it, three weeks by the time we put this out. I know you said you haven't read anything. You haven't read anything. I read Batman. Oh, is the one where Jim Gordon is Batman? Lay it on me. Now, I have been... Damn, we're a, just like against this. Yeah, we're 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 pushing it. I have been against this since the idea of a robotically suited Jim Gordon with a mohawk. <laughs> Upon reading it, it's like shoes. Scott Snyder is f-ing good, dude. Yeah, because he has taken an idea that I have like just cringed at the thought of, and I can't wait to read the next issue. Wow, I was very very surprised. Hmm. As far as other DCU fare, not so much. Right. I read the old. Oh, say what else have you read? I read Omega Men, okay. which I read half of before I quit reading it because the dialogue was retarded. It was like it was really like the story was written by like a retarded Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> so I couldn't. It, it didn't make a lot of sense. And it was real stupid, and uh, that whole report that Kyle Rayner would be dead is bull. He's not dead. Okay. So that sucked. I read uh, Starfire. How was that? It was actually pretty good. They've weirdly taken... Who's writing it? Uh, well, all right. Holy sh**. You got an alarm on there? Right. What the f*** was that about? Amanda Connor? Really? Is that right? You know, I don't know. Is Jimmy Palamati's wife? Maybe. It, it might actually be Palamati. You know, now I'm just going to have to look. But I've read it. Yeah. And she's like uh, a combination of Starfire from New 52 mixed with some elements of Starfire from, like, Teen Titans. Okay. So she's kind of goofy. She says a lot of stupid stuff like Starfire and Teen Titans Go would say. I was watching that yesterday. I was actually texting him yesterday. I was like, dude, this cartoon is hilarious. I love that damn cartoon. But it was it was actually uh, it was pretty good, man. I, I can't complain. It's when Robin was going to show everybody how to play football. Not American football, but football. Yeah, it's Connor and Palmati. Okay. Yeah, they both do Harley as well. So it was really good. I was pleasantly surprised. Um, God, what else did I read? I read all the Superman stuff so far. Oh, I'm sorry. Super Bro. Oh. Is that the one where he loses his powers? And, yeah. And which tells him out which I, I can't seem to find the issue where that takes place. I don't know if that happened before Convergence and I just missed it. But, uh, yeah, so apparently Lois Lane sold Superman out. Everybody knows Superman's Clark Kent, and he is significantly depowered. And this is in continuity? Yeah. The New 52 continuity? This is the DCU. Right, but remember how they were continuing some of the New 52 books? Yeah, 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 that's one of the continuations of the New 52. That's not the New 52. The thing I wonder is, like, I've seen where they're showing future issues of Deathstroke, and it shows Superman fighting Deathstroke. I wonder if he's powered Superman? Okay, now, see, here's a good issue. I'm glad you brought that up because I also run the new Justice League issue, okay. which starts Dark Side War. Now, as we all know, Hal Jordan's a fugitive, no longer a Green Lantern. Right. Well, that's been like that for a while. Isn't Bruce it? Wayne's dead. No, that was the first issue that just came out. Okay. Which, dude, he's totally rocking the long hair. He's like a hippie now with like a weird cloak and a power glove. It's, it's really okay. strange. I was actually looking forward to the direction bef- when... The book went on hiatus for Convergence, and now that I've read it, I think I might just bail on the title. Like, I don't know. I, I don't know, man. Well, I just don't. What the f*** they're doing there? But, mm-mm. Dark Side War Justice League. Bruce Wayne's still Batman. Hal Jordan's still normal. Superman still has his powers and his costume. Which costume? The New 52 costume. Okay. I don't know what the hell that's about. So the continuity is just all over the place. So DC is keeping it up with our moniker for them, destroying continuity. Like, it doesn't fit in at all. It doesn't. Now, bro, I actually read <laughs> Super Bro and Batman, where they meet up, and it's kind of interesting. I mean, it's it's interesting. It's the an interesting... Jim Gordon Batman? Yeah, the Jim Gordon Batman. Which, that works for me. Super Bro doesn't work for me. 
he's like, just like, he's almost went back to the costume of uh, Grant Morrison action with the jeans and the t-shirt, yet he has pieces of his cape left over from his costume that wasn't completely destroyed, and he's got them wrapped around his hands, kind of like, almost like brass knuckles. I don't know if that's like for protection on his like hands or like a weapon. Like, yeah. It's like seeing Punk, you know, right next to Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. So, like I said, man, there's every interpretation of Superman they do ever since before Flashpoint has just been more f***ed up than the one before. So I don't know if this is like, because, I mean, that was part of people's complaints, right? Oh, Superman's too powerful, so they, you know, got to, no. Like, he gets in a fight with regular dudes. Like, regular dudes are like, holy shit, that's Superman, I'm going to kick his <laughs> Like, when, where the, first of all, where did all this vitriol come for Superman? Like, I thought Superman in the world of the DC Universe was like, Superman, like, everybody loves Superman. Yeah. Now everyone wants to, like, kick his because he's a dirty alien. See, I'm not a fan of stories that start off with, like, okay, this is the new status quo. How the hell did it get there? Oh, we'll go back and tell you how it happened later. Like, just, no, man. I've always hated that. Well, I think it's... It's, it's it, a plot point that's been done over It got time. told somewhere, I just don't read Superman. Gotcha. And I only read Superman because of the bro man. I mean, super bro. <laughs> the bro the man. Bro man. <laughs> Most recent Superman anything I read was where he was part of Future's End. Mm-hmm. It wasn't even him most of the time. It was uh, Shazam. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he, he shows up towards the end with, like, Constantine. Him. Yeah. Constantine finds him, like, in Africa. Yeah, yeah he's, like, hiding out in the desert. And Shazam's running around wearing the Superman costume, but he's got, like, a motorcycle helmet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, that was him? Yeah. 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 Okay, I remember that. I remember they were like, oh, well, they made a big deal about whose identity he was and all this other stuff. So, as always, DC just, uh, they don't know what they're doing. Chocolate Twinkies. Well, at least we all can be happy that Convergence is over. Yes. <laughs> I'm absolutely ecstatic that Convergence is over. Finally can get back to their books. Once y'all leave today, i got to read those death strokes. I just downloaded them earlier. Oh. I actually gave them to him, too, so. I'm just happy i got a full list back again. You gave me Deathstroke? <laughs> yeah, I what gave you that, too. What do I want Deathstroke for? I don't know. Cause Not him. Hey, hey, Harley Quinn's in it. Yeah, there you go. That's I your girl. That. You got. You know you got a mad boner for Harley. <laughs> you do. Your, your kid's even named after her. This conversation is going in a very inappropriate place now. <laughs> oh. I know you don't comment on your last one about him with his kid being named after that. Then, oh, no. Saying logical, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that at all. I tried to get just my, stop, my kid's you're initials to be JLA. You're, you're digging I'm yourself. just saying that you're like an uber fan. She's in the book. Give it a chance. Don't be a douche. She like actually plays a pretty big part in it, too. Some other person that I won't mention. That runs, you know, a supposedly. I like how we've been going back and forth. He's like, I, I feel like you felt like you're being left out, so now you're trying to get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you minute. know. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm part of the brand, it right? So I gotta be like, it I went for the low blow. Anyway, that's that's episode fifty three. You okay? Stretch, man. You know, we we started earlier. I mean, later today, so you got to sleep in. Actually, no, I didn't. Oh, well, whose fault is that? My kids. Oh, yeah, yeah just, I'm blaming the four-year-old. That's great. Um, we still have the petition up. JDF versus... Uh, CM Punk. Yeah, thank you. In Tom. the UFC. Yeah. Sign it, share it. Please. Click the link below in I've the description. I've already started deleting people off Facebook because I know you guys didn't sign it. And, you know, if you can't show me support, then you know, I don't need I'm it. just going to, like, if I could set up a robo thing to just post it, like, every minute, just to flood so people would just like, all right, just and hit share. That's all you gotta do. I was you can do it like, like when people are adding people to groups. You just and add them, and they have to delete themselves off. And yeah. You point those people out. Like, oh really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna start tagging people in it. Nice. Like constantly, and then just share, 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 share. Like um, I, I, I said on Facebook, I won't stop until it's over 300, because then I know that everybody I know on Facebook has signed it at least. Yeah. I stopped even asking people. I just like start calling people out. And, uh, what was that we were saying about catching flies with vinegar, man? Yeah. Like, you ask people not say nobody will do it. And then you get on there and just be a dick about I'll it. I'll give you a free sign. toy. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like, what do I sign? Yeah, right? Like, yeah. can't do nothing. Man. You, you offer know? people free shit, and no one's like, uh, we'll just start being a You know what's funny? Way. Somebody on Facebook, um, my personal Facebook, and they, they posted a petition. And they're like, hey, we're trying to do this, we're trying to do that. And I was like, get out of here. <laughs> you. No. 
Yeah, Bye. That's, that's how I'm going to be whenever I see like people posting those like change.org things or, oh, our house burned down or anything like that. I'm like, well, it sucks. You should have signed a petition on it. <laughs> <laughs> To truly try to get half of you, but because you couldn't take 30 seconds to find a position, you go karma. Karma. Yeah, right? Now you don't have a computer to sit down and sign that in. Oh, um, what else? Follow us on Twitter at Comics Remix, at The Spinner Rack. Um, Facebook us, Facebook.com slash Comics Remix. Junior at Comics Remix, Brian at Comics Remix, Alex, Alex at Comics, at Comics Remix. Remix. Um, what else? I'm not promoting the website anymore because it's just kind of whatever. So I'm we'll working pr- on we'll the website. Sti- stuff as it warrants. The new website is being worked on. I was that's another reason why I'm like stretching because I'm tired. I was up very late working on that website. Um, so I mean that'll hopefully be done by the end of summer. What? I'm not asking about nobody. For it's any the money. world's tiniest violin plan. Just for oh, you. I thought you were like money. I was like I'm no, not asking no, anybody no. for money. It's, it's one of those things that if this was a video show, people would get it. Oh, well, there's so many. Like that for the past three years, we do these little things. Yeah, and no, yeah. It's like, like I think it was like two episodes ago where I'm, I'm nodding and I'm agreeing. You're like, no, you can't do that. No I'm, one like, can right, see I'm like, I'm like, stop it. nodding. No <laughs> one can see you. <laughs> oh, geez. so that's it. Fifty three in the books. See you next week. Oh, thank you, Chris, for being on. The oh show. yeah, I'm oh, yeah. sitting right here. Yeah, right? I'm still here. That's real good. You're you're an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> you stifle. You invite the guy. <laughs> we we curtail the episodes so we can try and talk about mostly DC stuff because that's his his realm. And you yeah. block me ten minutes in, so I'm trying to I'm trying to turn it because we really didn't have much to talk about. And then you just gotta be like F- Walker. Do I have to? That's that's not dirty, is it? Yeah. F- Walker. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to be. F- Whatever you do with f- is your business. <laughs> 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 you Holy. I did say beep. I don't know what the f*** that means, but I'll be doing it. <laughs> so you do like, when you play it back, it's just, so I have to beep, beep. I have to beep, beep. Yeah, totally. It's going to sound great. People are going to love it. He's going to love it when he listens to it on Wednesday. If he listens to it, because now he was here. So he's like, why the f*** did you listen to it? I was there. Nice. That's kind, of, that's kind of how I feel about it. You, you, when, you, when we first started doing this, you'd be like, don't you listen to this sh-? I'm like, uh, kind of. I just edit out some stuff I know was there, and then I just throw it up. Oh, you know what, though? We, we seriously do have people who, who listen mm-hmm. that don't really advertise that they listen. Because I do get comments every now and then on the YouTube or, like, on my personal Facebook. People will be like, hey, I like that you were talking about that. Like, uh, there's a customer that I met at uh, the shop when I worked there. Very nice lady. Um, she actually gave me some very helpful advice, but uh, she was listening and she commented on the episode when we were talking about um, Starfire getting like the the new outfit, and I was like, oh, it was kind of skimpy and all this other stuff. So she comments like on the post, and she's like, so it was just kind of skimpy. So with a comment like that, and that was like a, a, something we were talking about mid episode. Obviously, she listened. Totally. You know, so thank you. You know who you are. Yeah, always big love to the fans. We know what it means to have fans, unlike perpetrating motherfuckers. You know who I want to who I want to thank actually. Um, one of our listeners, Jim Eckner. I don't know if you've ever met Jim. He's uh, I can't say where he works because it would give up one of my watering holes. But uh, he's got everybody at his job pretty much in our age bracket listening. Like I went in there one day That's... to look for some turtles, and he was there, and we were talking. And one of the guys walked by, and he's like, oh, hey, this is Junior from Comics Remix. He's like, oh, yeah, cool, I watch your show, and like the old episodes. I was like, all right, cool, you know. So, I mean, it was cool, you know, so thank you, Jim, for continuing to spread the word. Do you call that um, guy a hate for saying he watches it? No, he's not from Tennessee. Oh, I get you. Right. Yeah, it's just, it's just you. You're just getting singled out now because he's a Dude, old. it's the accent, and it's the John Deere hat. <laughs> <laughs> how could you not? This is how you know he's part of us now, when he gets... A hazing of some sort. That is true. John can attest to that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But that yeah. was not me. Johnny That P. was more David than it was That me. was, David was harsh on that motherfucker. I think I, mean, I painted a target on my back after I came to your birthday party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, oh, that was, that, that's a night that will forever be. That will live in infamy? Yeah. That was, that was just a good night. All right, that's it. Episode fifty-three. Yeah, let's stop rambling. Yeah, you're just you're just going on about this is probably like an extra ten minutes of just bullshit.
It's got to, people are like, what the f*** are these guys doing? Have fun. It's the meth. We'll see you next week. <laughs>